Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Elian with Kevin Donnelly. We're going to talk today about speeding up die-to-die -die interconnectivity. Kevin, what's changed as we start getting into uh, disaggregation of what used to be an SOC into lots of different chiplets? How does, how does that actually affect what you're doing in terms of die-to-die -die communication? Well, you move from a paradigm where, you know, wires that are on chip are effectively free and you can get as many as you want. Anytime you disaggregate, you break it into multiple chips, you narrow things down effectively, you can get less connections between them. And so that restricts data movement, whether it's chip to chip or chip to say a memory device. And basically the distance matters, right? Distance matters and the number of wires that you have matters, but the wires don't shrink, which is one of the problems that you're starting to run into and why we're disaggregating these SOCs. Exactly. Uh, wires on chip are tiny. Wires that go across the package are unnecessarily bigger and you can't get as many. They don't shrink. Uh, there's no Moore's law to shrink the packaging line. So yeah, it's a, it's a problem that they're restricting the amount of data you can move between chiplets. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Kevin, what are we looking at? So I'm showing two chiplets here. And with a limited number of wires, you're trying to get as much bandwidth as possible between those two chiplets. And on the top, I'm showing a standard UCIE or bunch of wires interface where each wire is carrying data in one direction. You have a transmitter connecting, transmitting data to this chiplet transmitter transmitting data back to this chiplet. And that's uh, very common in the industry. That gives you a certain amount of bandwidth per wire. But you've got a lot more data now to deal with too, right? So you think about an AI chip, for example, particularly in the training side or anything going on inside a, a data center, your utilization of those wires is much higher than it was in the past. That's right. You have a tremendous explosion of bandwidth that needs to be communicated between chips. And your, your options are either to add more wires uh, or to try to get more bandwidth per wire. So how do you get more bandwidth per wire and what do you have to think about? If you're an engineer working with this, what do you actually have to think about? So you have to think about uh, the signal integrity of the connection that you're doing. And in all of the signaling, whether it's CERTES or dotted eye connections, uh, you look at the Nyquist rate, how fast you can run within a given interconnect, uh, depending on the distance and the capacitance and, and the, the resistance of the interconnect. Uh, and you get as, you, you can figure out how much bandwidth you can communicate over that medium. So rather than turning up the, the clock frequency, which has been sort of stalled out since, what, the early 2000s, how do you solve this problem? One approach that we're using is to transmit in both directions at the same time on each wire, which gives you twice as much bandwidth on the same number of interconnect. Basically a, a two-lane uh, highway as opposed to a one-lane highway, right? It's basically a two-lane highway on, on each road as opposed to individual split roads. Any overhead in doing that? Any problems that come as, as a result? There are... There is overhead in doing that in that uh, you have to be able to, of course, have transmitters and receivers on every end. Uh, but one the complexity of this is things that have been adopted by IEEE standards, such as 10 base T Ethernet, uh, to allow you to um, signal in both directions at the same time. And when you're signaling in both directions at the same time, do you have noise that potentially can interrupt the signals as they go? That's right. And uh, the way you are able to uh, do this signaling successively is have, being able to cancel that noise. So, for example, you know what you're transmitting and you're able to cancel that transmit signal so that the receiver can receive it. Um, and in addition, if there are discontinuities or uh, transitions in the medium that you're signaling over, you're going to have echoes that come back you need to be able to cancel those echoes. So a combination of transmit signal cancellation and echo cancellation enable simultaneous bidirectional signaling to work. How about other things like um, heat that builds up inside of packages, for example? How does that affect something like this? So that's an interesting question. 
there, there is no difference when you're doing a, a heat extraction for chiplets, whether you're doing unidirectional signaling or simultaneous bidirectional signaling. Uh, but thermals are a big problem in all uh, system and package designs today. And you've also got things as you start getting into these very, very advanced nodes where you have potentially electron tunneling too, right? I mean, you've got all sorts of issues that you didn't have to deal with in the past as we start thinning out the dielectrics. How does that affect the movement of data? Well, I think it, so I would say there's no difference between unidirectional and simultaneous directional for those. I think all interfaces in very advanced nodes are challenged by some of the uh, transistor effects that you outlined. They're very much uh, nonlinear effects that are, are used to be second or third order that now really have to be considered in your design. What does this actually look like to the user? So you're dealing basically with parallel data here, right? Ultimately, in all physical, all FIs, you're going to put in parallel data and serialize it and transmit it, whether it's unidirectional or, in our case, simultaneous bidirectional. It looks identical to the user. It's just uh, more wire, parallel wires at, for a given area than you would see before. So you get better uh, bandwidth efficiency for your silicon area, but no other difference. If you're designing this, um, what do you have to think about that you didn't think about before then? Is it any different when you're dealing with uh, bidirectional, or is it still the same? Okay, we're just moving it faster, so now we have all these options open to us that we didn't before. I think from a user standpoint, from a parallel interface standpoint, it's, you won't even know what's there's a difference of what's happening on the channel. And from an analog standpoint, yes, there's many things, as we discussed, that have to be considered. But a person who's integrating the chip is not considering those that's Phi design problem. And there is an analog layer in here too, right? I mean, this is not just all digital. You have to put in something that's analog to make all this work. That's right, yeah. The, the, as I said, the transmit cancellation, echo cancellation, this is an analog front end uh, that is well, part of the expertise of our designers. And this is where things get really complicated as you're starting to look at movement of data inside a chip is how do you speed this up based upon what you already have in this this chip and in this design and you're going, okay, it's not just a digital solution anymore. Uh, that's true. And I think that's true. As soon as you disaggregate chips and you have to connect them, you have to look at uh, high speed connections across them and uh, their signal integrity, power integrity concerns. And it really is more analog than digital on those interconnects. A lot of this has been done in very um, proprietary type of applications where Big companies, system companies are designing these kinds of chips. Do you see this moving down into other areas as we go forward? Uh, I think there are going to be, it's going to continue with really proprietary from the big companies who control everything. And there's going to be use cases where uh, standards are important and, and come into play. And uh, it's not really going to shift from proprietary to all standard base, it's really going to, I think, be a mix, personally, going forward. This is already in use, though, out in the market, right? I mean, it's not like this is brand new. This has been evolving for and de under development for years. That's correct. Uh, chiplets in, have been shipping for a while. Both um, Bunch of Wires and, and UCIE are in volume production, and the simultaneous bi bidirectional has been shipping for some time in production. So they're all proven technologies but it's really an application-driven choice what kind of interconnect, whether it's proprietary, a standard, or something like the simultaneous bidirectional, is selected by the designer. Kevin Donnelly, thanks for a great explanation. Great. Thank you, Ed.